I'm really shiny because it's hot in here. Hi guys, it's Andrea Blythe. So I have some really exciting news. I have a chapbook coming out. The chapbook, which is being published by Interstellar Flight Press, is called 12 Poems Inspired by the Brothers Grimm Fairy Tale. And the tale that it's specifically referencing is The Twelve Dancing Princesses, which is not as well known as something like Snow White or Rapunzel or Sleeping Beauty, but is one of my favorite tales. And doubly exciting, I received my author's copies this week. Let me tell you, it is so amazing to hold the book in your hand, the actual physical copy. It has this really nice soft cover and it also has this lovely image on the back, which is by the artist Jana German. And I am just so excited to be able to finally hold this book in my hands. This has been a project that I've been working on for a really long time. 12 started as an individual poem and then expanded from there and I realized I had a whole project and it took me a couple of years to finally like pull together and hunger down and actually finish each of these prose poems. Like I said it's based on the 12 dancing princesses fairy tale and for those of you who might not be as aware of what that fairy tale is about basically it starts with a mystery. Each night the 12 princesses are locked in their room by the king for some reason we don't know and each morning when they wake up and the door is unlocked the king discovers that all their dancing shoes have been danced to pieces and nobody knows why or what's going on so the king issues a proclamation like they're known to do and he basically says if anybody can figure out what's going on with his 12 daughters and how they're managing to dance their shoes to pieces each night then they will win the opportunity to choose one of the daughters for marriage. A bunch of suitors come and they try to figure it out and they fail after three nights, after a challenge of three nights, and when they fail, they're executed. So it happens that an old soldier who is no longer taking part in war is traveling along a road and happens to meet an old woman. The old woman asks who he is and where he's going. So he explains to her that he has the idea of taking up the challenge of figuring out what's going on with the 12 princesses. The old woman goes, that's easy. All you have to do is take this invisibility cloak that I happen to have on hand for some reason and don't drink or eat anything that the princesses offer you and you will figure it out and it'll be no problem. So the old soldier goes to the kingdom, he goes before the king, he decides to take up the task and he's given three nights to figure out what's going on. He goes and he sits in an ante room outside of the princess's room. The princesses offer him wine to have for the evening, which he carefully tips into a plant and does not drink. Then he pretends to fall into a deep sleep. So the princesses then acknowledge that they're gonna go off somewhere in their locked room. They're all dressed up for a ball. They got their sh shiny new shoes on and all that. And the soldier slips on the invisibility cloak and decides to follow them. The princesses open up a door in the floor and he follows them down, 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 down into this hidden underworld underneath the, the palace and the kingdom. They pass through this beautiful garden with these trees made of gold and diamond and silver. And the old soldier collects samples of each one along the way as proof. Then the 12 princesses get in boats. He hops into a boat with the youngest. They sail off to an island. He witnesses them dancing with princes who may or may not be fairy princes, depending on which version of the story you read, and watches them dance all night long and then follows them back. He does this for all three nights, watching them each time as they go down into this underworld and dance the night away with these princes. On the third day, the king asks him, what's up with my daughters? And the soldier lays everything out, explains everything, shows the silver, diamond, and gold leaves that he collected along the way as evidence, and the daughters are brought forth. They're forced to confess that, yep, this is what's been going on, and the old soldier selects the eldest daughter to be his bride, and they get married. And that's essentially the story. What fascinates me about this story, this Brothers Grimm fairy tale, is the fact that nobody comes off as being the good guy. Nobody comes off as being particularly nice. The king is, lock, is locking his daughters in the room and he's executing the suitors. 
The daughters themselves are drugging the suitors, knowing that they're going to get murdered at the end of three days. The soldier and the other suitors are coming along thinking they can just easily win a bride for themselves, like a woman is a prize to be won. Aladdin reference there. And basically there's no clear sense of morality in this. What's also interesting is that even though the princesses are caught and are forced to confess, they never apologize or show any remorse for the actions they did, and they're never punished for it. So that is really what drew me into this story in terms of wanting to write about it. I came at it from the point of view, if the events in this fairy tale took place, then what happens next? The assumption at the end of fairy tales is the implied happily ever after, even if it's not written, that things are going to be set right now and it's going to be okay and nothing else is going to go wrong. However, looking at this story and looking at the fact that the soldier chooses the eldest daughter because he's not very young anymore himself and it, to him it makes sense to marry the eldest. However, we're not given the eldest daughter's perspective. And what we know from the story is that it's the eldest princess who bring, carries the wine to the soldier and to the suitors, drugging them each night. So knowing that, and knowing that she is one of the instigators in drugging these men, I came to the realization that it would be very unlikely that she would be contented by this state of events. In fact, I think she would be furious. And that realization also made me realize that each daughter would have a separate reaction to having the dancing taken away from them, to having this escape that they had had for themselves removed from their lives, that they would be forced to return to ordinary lives. And simultaneously, it seems unlikely that people who have been spending all their nights in some sort of fairy, magical, whatever realm would be unaffected by those events. I started with the eldest daughter, started talking about her experiences afterwards and her reaction to things. And then I started to see how each princess, each sister, started to move towards their own individual desires. Each one has their own journey that they go on. So essentially that's it. What these poems do is show what happens to each princess, each sister after the events of the dancing ends. So anyways, I'm really excited. To wrap up, I would like to read one of the poems from the collection. Uh, this is The First Sister. <clears throat> The white of her wedding dress evoked not innocence, but the heat of her rage. Her husband, old soldier, trickster, liar, sweated under her incandescence. His hands blistered as he took her arm and steered her in procession down the aisle. He chose her because she was the eldest, because the weight of history was braided in her brown hair and piled on her head, just as his sins were written in the scars mapping his body. As the soldier and his prize stared at each other across the marriage bed, he felt distant battlefields in his bones. I won't take anything you are not ready to give, he said, keeping his distance, patient. Her blood spit within her veins like dragon fire. In reply, she ravaged him, raking his bare skin with clawed fingers, biting until she drew blood, taking every ounce of pleasure from him as she had once taken from the dancing. She dreamed herself poisonous and woke in the morning to fresh resolution. Gathering herbals from a sister's garden, she brewed belladonna tea, steeped mushrooms and aconite, and baked hemlock seasoned lark into a meat pie. Her husband thanked her for her generosity and tipped his teacup into a vase of dahlias declared an aversion to mushrooms, and declined the pie, his stomach over full for anything so rich. <laughs> she tossed foxglove leaves into salads, cooked creamy mandrake au gratin, and slipped cyanide into his wine. The soldier picked his way through the greens, knocked the au gratin clumsily to the floor, raised his goblet high to his wife's health, drank deep, and did not die having already switched one cup for another. They played a game of poisoning, death always at the edges of every smile, every kiss and touch and caress. 
One of these days you're going to succeed in poisoning me, he said, voice graveled as he rasped his bristled chin against the softness of her throat and scoured her bare hip bones with war-weathered hands. And then won't you just regret? Such, she said between gasps of breath, such regret. And that's the first sister. That's the first of the poems. Well, kind of. There's a prelude. Anyways, this is it. This is my book. It's beautiful. And it's coming out this September. Pre-orders are now currently open. Please check them out. They're available from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and IndieBound. And I'll put the link below. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about this, for being a part of my channel at all, for checking it out. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I just, uh, I wish you guys all the best and I hope you're doing well. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a like, maybe a subscribe, maybe ring that bell, and hopefully I will see you in the next video pretty soon.